Batman Justice Unbalanced. Can't say I've played this one before. It has a really nice case, I gotta say. This is a sequel to Batman Toxic Chill, and I gave that one a fairly decent review. Surely this'll make for a nice follow-up. Let's throw it in and give it a go. Those jeweled eggs are like ticking time bombs, Batman! Wherever they are, we've got to find them. Fast! Oh, sorry about that. I must have put the wrong game in on accident. I already made a video on Toxic Chill. Oh. This is a story about a man you might be somewhat familiar with. A very rich man, often known by a name different from his own. An aggressive, powerful man who would stop at nothing to reach his goals. Feared by many, this man serves as a symbol of intimidation for anyone who wishes to confront him. You guessed it, this is the story of Kevin O'Leary, also known as Mr. Wonderful. Before he went on to be known for TV shows like Shark Tank, Kevin O'Leary had his own software company called SoftKey. In 1994, Mr. O'Leary expressed interest in the edutainment market, which he found most profitable. One of the biggest edutainment companies was The Learning Company, notable for its Reader Rabbit series at the time. It was doing good for itself, but as his name suggested, Mr. Wonderful had a wonderful idea. He went on to buy The Learning Company, fire most of the staff, and completely change the way they did things around there. Mr. Wonderful valued money and did everything in his power to make sure The Learning Company would make as much of it as they possibly could. He did this by releasing many titles, often featuring colorful covers or eye-catching characters. But the games themselves were an afterthought. This not only allowed the company to produce more games, but it filled the learning company's library with eye-catching titles that masked the mediocrity inside. In 1999, Kevin sold the company to Mattel, which would go on to be one of the biggest disasters in the history of business deals. Some say Mattel lost over $3 billion because of it. Needless to say, Kevin was fired about a year later. Even so, this changed the way a lot of people viewed edutainment. Even though the learning company resented Kevin McWonder, his influence was very much present, likely because of the people he hired after the buyout. Throughout the 2000s, TLC came out with many, many games, many of which were based on beloved franchises. In September of 2003, they released two Batman games, Toxic Chill and Justice Unbalanced. They were very similar, but had some key differences. Justice Unbalanced was actually a sequel to Toxic Chill, but it managed to be a little more popular. Only way to find out how it is is to give it a go, so let's get into it. Like with Toxic Chill and many other learning company games, as soon as you boot it up, you get this weird error message that says, You operating system is not supported. Play at your own risk. I wasn't sure what exactly this risk was, but thankfully someone explained it to me. It's actually because Mr. Wonderful's essence still lingers at TLC, and whenever you install a game, it manifests itself on your computer and, nah, it's just a weird warning. At the start, we see Two-Face ordering some guy to make a bunch of eggs for him. An imperfection? Oh. They must be perfect! The workers must love him at Denny's. Ship them to Gotham City in exactly two weeks! 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 That echo felt a little forced, don't you think? It's quite a way to start the game. 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 We then see some of the Penguin's henchmen getting a shipment of the eggs. This essentially spoils the plot twist later on that it's not actually the Penguin that's behind these crimes. I don't really mind the audience knowing something the characters don't, but it's an interesting decision. It's like Columbo, but with Batman. Careful, Billy. If we break these eggs... The boss won't get his full balanced breakfast. Batman and Robin show up to fight, but one of the crooks gets away, leaving a single egg behind. As always, Robin is there to make goofy remarks whenever something happens, and Batman has a bit of an Adam West voice going on. Batman! One got away! That car is registered to Mr. Oswald C. Cobblepot. The Penguin? Something's up, Batman. Interesting. Let's head to the Batcave. They bring the egg back to the Batcave at Wayne Manor, where they find a message inscribed on it. Commissioner Gordon then calls and tells Batman that the eggs were delivered to three of Gotham City's elite. Then the game commences. Like I mentioned earlier, the Batcave is exactly the same as it was in Toxic Chill. There are some interactable features, but not a whole lot to see. 
If you go on the computer, you can read news articles that tell you some stuff about the storyline. There are three big statues being built. I'm sure those won't come into play later. You also have profiles for each of the villains in both this game and Toxic Chill. Both games say the same thing. You can also see your gear, but you hardly get to use any of it in this game. Again, you use most of it in Toxic Chill. They likely just didn't want to change anything about the computer interface. Either that or it serves as an ad for the other game. Mr. Wonderful would be so proud. Now you can get into your Batmobile and travel all throughout Gotham City. There aren't that many signs telling you where to go, so it's very easy to get lost going back and forth between the same three screens. Get ready for a lot of that if you play this game. You can meet the three egg targets, but they disappear as soon as you exit the screen, so make sure you hear all you can from them before you leave. Now let's get on to the minigames. If you head into the houses, you see Penguin's goons trying to get the egg, but it starts ticking. I, uh, found the egg, Mr. Penguin, sir, but it's ticking. I don't care if that chicken side is clucking, I need my breakfast. Then Batman shows up to spoil the meal and the goons run away, leaving a trail of laser shooting umbrellas behind. This begins a very unique, but kind of strange puzzle. I didn't fully understand it, so I had to use the help feature to listen to our butler Alfred explain the rules. You have to spin the umbrellas so the colored patterns match whichever pattern they connect with. Then you can destroy one of the laser shooting umbrellas. It's actually kind of addicting. It really gets your brain moving. Ironically, the harder stages with extra patterns are actually slightly easier. You can narrow it down a little more when you have more to work with. Overall, it's a decent challenge. But... Like with the Riddler missions in Toxic Chill, you have to play through four rounds of these stages three times, while you only play three rounds of the other minigame once. At the second location, you get the exact same cutscene as the first with a different colored background. I mean, it's the exact same mission, so why bother changing it? So whenever you destroy the umbrellas, you get the egg bomb, then Batman decodes another message on it. Again, like in Toxic Chill, your goal is to collect all the secret messages. More on this later. If you head to the Iceberg Lounge, where Penguin and his goons hang out, you get this new minigame. The eggs are in a bunch of different safes, but the means of unlocking the safes are rather unconventional. The henchmen are stupidly talking out loud, and you're able to decipher the things you need to do in the room by listening to them. Let's listen. Alright, remind me again how we rigged the room. Weren't you paying attention? First thing you have to do is fix the lampshade. Wait, Harley? Why the heck is Harley Quinn working for the Penguin? How's that for a comic idea? Harley aside, I had some mixed opinions on this minigame while playing through it. You have to navigate through the room in darkness and find objects with a flashlight. You activate the objects in the order the henchmen say to. It's an okay stage in concept, but from a story perspective, don't you think this is a little too luck-dependent for the world's greatest detective? I know, I know. Detectives don't rely on luck. I'm also not entirely sure if it was necessary for this stage to be in the dark. It only adds an extra level of annoyance. Also, the level design isn't great. Look here. I have to open the laptop, and you can see my mouse is clearly stationed on top of it, but the chair moves instead. This caused me to lose the mission. Come on, Mr. One- I mean TLC. This is such a straightforward minigame. Please don't get simple things like this wrong. After getting all the eggs, you get a cutscene where nothing happens, then you can go back to the Batcave with your eggs. You then have a series of messages to decode by matching letters to symbols to spell out a phrase. Once again, this is taken from Toxic Chill, but here's my issue with this. In Toxic Chill, it worked because the Riddler was the antagonist. The Riddler leaves riddles, so you went around finding his riddles and solving them. It's like they decided to reuse that format, but with a different villain, so it doesn't work as well in this one. Don't get me wrong, it's still the most fun part of the game, but I think you can tell they came up with Toxic Chill first and decided to build off of it for the sequel. Once you decode the messages, you match them to complete the phrases, then you realize you're still missing three, so you go to wander around the city to find the last remaining eggs. You can go over to this statue area, and you can find a bunch of addresses that mean absolutely nothing because you've already gotten the eggs from the listed locations. But if you climb the statues, you get an entirely new stage that you totally saw coming if you played the first game. You're in a platforming stage with very odd controls. Again, taken from Toxic Chill, but this time they actually took out most of the original features. Rather than having four gadgets, you only have two. You click these things to throw your batarang at them, then you can extend new platforms like an accordion. 
You also use the control button to grapple onto hooks. That's a strange choice of button, don't you think? But all of the stages are fairly easy. Also, the collectibles are useless and you have no reason whatsoever to collect them. At the end of the first stage, you reach the top of the statue where you can look at the other ones through binoculars, then you head to the next one to do another one. Every so often, Two-Face will appear, and keeping in line with his chance-based character, it's a gamble whether he'll throw something at you or not. One hit and you're dead, so make sure you hit all the save points you can find. Now the third statue is almost impossible to locate. I had to wander all over trying to find out where to go. I must have clicked on every last pixel trying to find out how to reach it. I'm not sure how I did it, but I eventually clicked the right thing and wound up where I needed to be. Batman meets Two-Face, who throws a bag of egg bombs at Robin, who then goes on to just stand there awkwardly until Batman throws the bag away. He's called the Boy Wonder because it's a wonder how he survived this long. Then it's on to the final platform stage. Batgirl, Robin, stand guard. Wait, Batgirl? Where is this Batgirl you speak of? I kid you not, this is the first time she's mentioned at all in this game. She's there when you finish the stage, but then she just leaves afterwards and is never mentioned again. TLC, why even include her at all? She doesn't even do anything! You also find Two-Face's car with an iceberg lounge napkin in it, so you figure out that Penguin's being framed by Two-Face. Oh wow, how shocking. Never saw that coming. Once you decode all the clues, you deduce a final code from the key letters, then you find out Two-Face is gonna blow up the Statue of Justice. It's holding scales, hence why the game is called Justice Unbalanced. Clever. You then head to the Batcopter and fly over to the statue. We then get a whole lot of exposition at once. Back when he was district attorney, Harvey Dent prosecuted the Penguin for stealing an egg-shaped jewel. The Penguin's attorney, Green, got the charges dropped by secretly bribing Thompson. Who was the judge on the case? And Stewart. Who served as the jury foreman? So Two-Face sets fire to the statue, but get this. Penguin and Commissioner Gordon are inside, so you have to go in and find them. Now that everything's on fire, we're in for one heck of a final minigame, don't you think? Yeah, it's literally just clicking on platforms in the right order. Is this a Dora the Explorer Flash game? I mean, Toxic Chill had a super intense final round, but this is just random clicking until you reach the other side of the gap. You know what? Fine. I wore my brain out trying to navigate the city in this game. I don't have the energy to use it again. So once you reach Two-Face, Batman beats him in a quick fight, then all the criminals are sent to Blackgate Prison, which is a unique location from the actual series. Maybe I can learn to turn the other cheek when it comes to those statues. Especially since they're now being paid for by my old pal, Bruce Wayne. He's not like us. He doesn't have a double life with a deep, dark secret. That is a very oddly specific thing to say about someone. And that brings us to the end of Batman Justice Unbalanced. In conclusion, it has its ups and downs. I don't mind that it has the same formula as Toxic Chill. Plenty of great franchises are formulaic. It just becomes more apparent when there aren't as many unique attributes to divert my attention away from the fact that I'm doing the same thing. The Umbrella and Flashlight minigames are fun in their own ways, but the platform sections are heavily watered down from how they were in the other game. I also didn't really find the story intriguing. It was fairly straightforward with a twist the audience already knew. At the same time, I do appreciate all the little features in this game, even if they aren't entirely necessary. It definitely feels like a Batman game from the DCAU era. The characters are written well, and the writers clearly understand the subject matter they're working with. Again, it has its pros and cons. Thank you for joining me, I will see you in the next memory.